here today with Steve Nelson, CPA, of Nelson CPA Managing Member. You probably know him best because he sold 5 million or more copies of QuickBooks for Dummies. So Steve, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Rick. First question is, let's talk about PPP loan forgiveness and what are the surprises? One of the big surprises is that as compared to the way um, we help our clients do the tax accounting for a return, PPP is going to be uh, much more work and, and require much more precision. A lot of the things that we and our clients have gotten used to and you know some of the imprecision, that's just not going to be there for the PPP loan application. There's a single accounting period, not multiple accounting periods. It's going to be one application, not something you can amend. 100% of any mistakes you make are going to impact forgiveness. So it's a very, very different type of accounting that we're going to need to do. You said people should stop worrying about the forgiveness. Why is that? Yeah, yeah that's, that's been a real surprise in this program, I think. Um, with the uh, PPP Flexibility Act, Congress um, created some safe harbors that let people probably wriggle out of um, losing forgiveness. But the other thing is, is that this program was originally set up and um, sort of suited to deal with eight weeks of, of payroll and some a little bit extra for some other things like rent and utilities. And when they change the rules and allow a 24 week window, it means that you might, you might not need to worry about uh, forgiveness um, due to something like a reduction in headcount. It would be not uncommon to cut half of your um, employees um, and, and yet still have more than enough payroll costs to receive almost total forgiveness. So that's gonna be a surprise um, but an important thing for businesses to stay alert to and our clients to stay alert to just so people make it through this pandemic. Boy, I, I think this is going to be much more like applying for a, a mortgage application when you're a self-employed person and the bank maybe doesn't trust you in terms of the substantiation. Or it's going to be like dealing with an IRS correspondence audit where you don't just give them a number, but you give them a number and then you back it up with lots and lots of documentation. That's going to be something that is going to surprise many um, small business uh, PPP borrowers, and it's going to overwhelm a number of those folks, I'm afraid. Are we looking at a year-round busy season for the next two years? Well, that's, a, that's an interesting thought. This year, we've had, a, um, you know, we've had the first half of the year be a tax season, and we're going to have a PPP loan forgiveness application season this year, I think. And we're going to have an extension season this year. So definitely this year feels that way. And I think our revenues and billing have looked that way. Um, we stalled briefly when um, literally when the nursing home, then when that first nursing home had all the um, infection. Um, but other than that, we've been very, very solid. And gosh, it, it's easy to believe that if um, uh, we have a lot of activity next year, it could look the same way. So I, I hadn't you know, thought of that, but that's, that's a real possibility, I suppose. Sorry to bring it up. <laughs> Steve Nelson, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Rick.